everyone, and welcome back to Tokyo Tuesdays, the segment in which I head to the Tokyo Disney theme parks to sample and review every last eatery. For our 59th episode, we're setting sail for Captain Hook's Galley. To find Captain Hook's Galley, start in Tokyo Disneyland's World Bazaar. Head straight through, passing through the first intersection, and eventually managing to pop out the other side. Veer to your left to make your way down to the road that circles back and around to the palace. Follow the road back, but before you make it to the palace itself, turn left to take the large wooden bridge into Westernland. Immediately after crossing the bridge, turn right and continue making your way to the back of the park. You'll pass by Snow White's Wishing Well on your left and the castle itself on your right. Now that you're in Fantasyland, follow the path along, veering left at the castle carousel. You'll pass by Snow White's Adventure on your left, the Dumbo the Flying Elephant ride on your right, and then Peter Pan's Flight on your left. Be sure to keep to the left of the walkway, because right next to Peter Pan's flight, appropriately enough, you'll find Captain Hook's Galley. Captain Hook's Galley is an outdoor counter service eatery that's doing its best to split the difference between a nautical feel and a storybook feel. It actually works out pretty well, maintaining the bold timber bean feel and look of most of Fantasyland, but adding flair, such as ship wheels, folding doors, and occasional gold flourishes and accents to really harken back to Hook's ship. Because of its proximity to the parade route, seating here can be a challenge, so do be sure to take that into consideration. It's time for another one of these. I am still in Halloween get up because today is actually Halloween as of this recording. It's not going to be when it goes up. But I do feel like I have to continue to explain the fact that I'm in costume, knowing that these are going up after Halloween. Anyways, today I am at Captain Hook's Galley, uh, which is a location that I wanted to try for a while. Uh, it has pizza, is what it specializes in, and they come in these nice little carrying boxes. This one's done up in the theme of uh, the, the parade, the Poppin' Live Parade. And it is a pumpkin pizza. So that's interesting. I've never had pumpkin pizza before, uh, but I'm certainly willing to try. As for a drink, I got the golden, uh, golden cider soda again, which seems to be replacing melon soda at all of the restaurants because I can't find melon soda anymore, which is a little sad. Uh, regardless, I'm going to have pizza for breakfast. Yay! Pizza time. Oh my goodness. So it's very, very reddish purple. I think onion, maybe? Let's find out. Whatever it is, it's good. This is good pizza. This is really good pizza. This is one of the best pizzas I've had in Japan in a while. Yeah, the crust on this is absolutely delicious. This is a really nice crust. Cheese is good. Ingredients are delicious. This is a good pizza. I... The base of the pizza is good enough that, like, I'm pretty sure the toppings don't even matter. They're, they're all probably going to be really delicious. Delicious. Ah, chicken. That's what that other ingredient is. Neat. Not a lot to say about this other than it's really good. I'm going to be finishing up my delicious, amazing pizza. And I will see you at the next place. Bye. mentioned, I did a lot of filming on Halloween. I know I said that I was going to be the nightmare until Christmas, but I actually have two more episodes filmed after this one, so we will be ringing in the new year with Jack Skellington as well. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's see how Captain Hook's galley fared first. Service is a three out of five. 
I arrived at this location first thing in the morning, before they even opened, actually, but open they did promptly at 9 o'clock. Now, I wasn't the only one looking to have pizza for breakfast on this particular day, so I did end up having to wait in line, but not for an overly long or unreasonable amount of time. The service was quick and friendly and professional, everything you'd expect. Three out of five. Atmosphere is a three or a four out of five, and I'm really hard pressed to say which is which. I think I'm going with a four out of five. However, it really, really stretches to earn that four. It does have a really nice style done up in these lovely earth tones, primarily brown and gold. However, in order to enjoy this style, you do have to get under a claustrophobically low ceiling to, to see them. Uh, once you are in there looking at them though, they're really nice. They have these really, really lovely golden flourishes that remind me a lot of the stern of Hook's boat, in addition to some really lovely murals. I feel like they could probably push it just a little bit more, but it's definitely above a three as far as quality goes. It's just, for a four, I would like to see more. If I gave out decimal points, this would be where I would do it. However, I do not. So, it is a four out of five. The price is... I was going to say three, but it's probably actually closer to a two. Let me explain. Uh, I don't get to eat pizza very often in Japan, and when I do, it's very different than what you would expect from an American perspective. Uh, so when I had this pizza, I was very excited because it was really, really good. However, most people probably aren't coming from that same point of view as I am. As I said, the pizza is good. The quality of the pizza here is very nice. So there's that. However, as I said, most people probably aren't as pizza starved as I am. The slices are on the larger side, so that's also a nice, you know, tick mark in the option of quality. Um, but are they large enough to, you know, be worth the price? Mm, that's up to you. Uh, so I would recommend that you look at the display food and decide for yourself whether or not this location looks like it's worth it. For me, absolutely, definitely yes. For you, maybe not so much. Two out of five. The food is, unsurprisingly, a four out of five. I really, really, really liked this pizza, and I was not expecting that at all. I don't really like pumpkin on things, in things. I don't like pumpkin flavor in general outside of pies. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, the Japanese interpretation of what constitutes pizza is somewhat off-center from where I would consider pizza. However, despite these two things, I really liked the pizza. A lot. So I have to imagine that the pizzas that they make year-round are even better, because this was the specialty pizza. So this was something that, you know, they only make sometimes. Definitely a four out of five. Well done. Overall, this gives Captain Hook's Galley an average rating of 3.25 out of five, which I am going to round up to a 3.3. .3. I really like this location, and I am actively looking forward to going back. With a 3.3 .3 out of 5, this ties Captain Hook's Galley with Miguel's El Dorado Cantina and the Café Orleans. Which is a really hard choice for me to make because I really like all three of those locations. Mm, I'm going to slot it in just above the Café Orleans but below Miguel's El Dorado Cantina. I like Mexican food more than I like pizza, however, pizza is more difficult to find in Japan than crepes. Still, what a choice to make. This will earn it 11th place on the master list. Meanwhile, on the counter service list, it faces the exact same tie, which plays out, unsurprisingly, in the exact same way, this time earning 8th place. So, that's it for this week. Come back next week if you want to find out where I'll be then. Hint, 
Those of you that have trilliselectinophobia may want to steer clear of this location. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave those down below. We'd love to hear from you. Give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do, we'd surely appreciate it. If social media is more your flavor, you can find us there, links to that in the description box. And I will see you next week for another Tokyo Tuesday.